It's Adam here for PC Monitors, and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the LG 32GK850F. The OSD is controlled by a joystick on the underside of the bottom bezel. You can see it's sort of glowing red, um, that's something you can set in the OSD, you can have it so it doesn't glow at all um, when the monitor's switched on if you prefer. So I've got it set so it glows red when the monitor's switched on, just so you can see it more clearly in the video. And if you twiddle that to the left, you can change the volume of anything connected to the 3.5mm headphone jack. If you twiddle it to the right as well, it does that. If you twiddle it down, you can cycle the different inputs. Twiddle it up, and you can also cycle the inputs. So there's just two features assigned to it there, but if you press it in, you get this little quick menu, sort of radial menu, and that um, has various other options. You can power the monitor off. Alternatively, if you hold the joystick in for a few seconds, it'll also power the monitor off. Um, you can select the input. There's game mode and there's settings. So game mode goes through the various different presets of the monitor, or some of the presets of the monitor, um, and I'll go through them in the main menu shortly. And it also gives you just a quick reference of various different settings on the monitor. So the main menu, there's again a repeat of various different options enabled, so you can see at a glance whether what the refresh rate is, whether free sync's on or off, um, various other settings as well. The first bit of the menu, the settings menu, is game mode, and that's the presets of the monitors. There's Gamer 1, um, which gives you full flexibility to change all of these settings, um, or most of the settings. Some are greyed out depending on the input you're using, and I'll come on to that shortly. Gamer 2 changes a few things, also greys a few more things out. And the other presets, um, they grey more things out, they give you less flexibility, and they don't do anything nice to the image. Um, I explore these in the calibration section of the review, so I'm not going to go through them again. Vivid just oversaturates the colours, crushes the shade variety, again that's explored in the review. Reader mode, um, again it is explored in the review, but I think it's worth revisiting it uh, in this video. This is a low blue light setting, so it makes the image a lot warmer, it decreases the blue light output from the monitor, but it also minimises the contrast. It gives a very flooded look to the image, and this is very similar to Samsung's eye saver mode, and it's designed to minimise the amount of time your eye spends adjusting to changes in brightness from the screen, because the brightness changes in the screen are going to be very subtle due to the very low contrast. Uh, but obviously your room lighting will really affect um, your eyes, how much work your eyes having to do as well, and not everyone finds the drop in contrast attractive or necessary for a comfortable viewing experience anyway. So I think they should have probably put another low blue light setting, an alternative low blue light setting um, in the monitor as well, and I'm slightly annoyed that they didn't. But uh, you can manually adjust the colour channels, and I'll come on to that shortly if you want to create your own low blue light setting. HDR effect, I guess this is worth going through as well, just to show you possibly, I don't know how this will come out in the video, but again everything looks horribly oversaturated, shades are crushed, things look over sharp, um, it just looks quite ugly to be fair. Um, again it's explored in the review, sRGB, this isn't an sRGB emulation mode, um, it just locks off certain settings and reduces the brightness, that kind of thing. Uh, but. It's not an emulation mode because it doesn't adjust the colour gamut. And again, this is all explored in the review. The game adjusts settings. One millisecond motion blur reduction. This is supposed to be a strobe backlight mode. And what that's supposed to do um, is it will make the backlight flicker at a frequency matching the refresh rate of the display. You're only supposed to be able to activate this at 144 Hz or 120 Hz. You can't use FreeSync at the same time. And it's similar to NVIDIA. Some NVIDIA G-Sync monitors offer something called ULMB, Ultra Low Motion Blur. Uh, BenQ have their own blur reduction technology as well, which is not GPU vendor specific. What this one is supposed to do is lower the motion blur um, lower the perceived blur by reducing eye movement, by making the monitor flicker like an impulse type display. This is all explored in the review. 
Basically though, it doesn't do anything at all. Um, now I don't know, I've got a very early revision of the monitor, so I'm just going to put it down to the fact that there's a bug in the firmware or something. I have notified LG of this issue, but they haven't got back to me in time to actually offer a fix or anything, so I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to review this feature. But all it does on my monitor is it makes the screen very bright. If it was flickering, uh, not only would the motion clarity improve, you would be able to see the flickering quite clearly on the camera. Um, but you can quite clearly see from the image it's completely stable, there's no flickering, it's flicker free. It's not a strobe backlight mode, it doesn't work at all. It does actually increase the brightness quite significantly, um, as if it's sort of using its HDR backlight settings, but it doesn't increase the contrast or anything like that. I didn't spend a lot of time uh, testing this, but it doesn't do anything particularly useful. FreeSync. You can set that to off, basic or extended. If you have a FreeSync compatible GPU, you can enable FreeSync. If you've got an NVIDIA GPU or a, a non-FreeSync compatible GPU, you can have this option on in the monitor, but there's no point because you can't use FreeSync. The difference between basic and extended um, is basically the ref variable refresh rate range. With basic, you have a variable refresh rate range of 120 to 144 hertz. Now, and that's pretty much pointless. If you have it set to extended, this increases to. 72 to 144 hertz. So yeah, the, the FreeSync floor of operation, again, I don't know if that's just because I've got an early revision of the monitor and it's something they're gonna change or improve, but on my monitor, the FreeSync floor is 72 hertz, which is rather high, but it does support LFC, low frame rate compensation, to get rid of tearing and stuttering below that. There's Black Stabilizer, which is similar to BenQ's Black Equalizer, and various other manufacturers have a similar setting, and what this does is it'll lighten, it'll adjust the gamma shit. What this does is it'll adjust the gamma curve of the monitor so that darker shades become brighter. So it's 50 at the moment, which is the neutral position. If you decrease that, dark shades blend in a bit more. If you increase it past 50, dark shades brighten up. And you can see there's a big difference between 50, which is the neutral, and 55, which is just one setting up. But you can increase it further, and that's to give you a competitive advantage in games. Um, if you're not so bothered about the game looking as the developer intended, and you just want to see things in dark areas. But be aware that setting it between 50 and 55 will increase the black point. Um, so that's the lightness of black itself as well, so you get a massive decrease in contrast, and that's explored in the review as well. Next up there's response time, again explored in the review, you can set that to faster, fast, normal, or off. There's an on-screen crosshair function, so you can have a little on-screen crosshair of various different colours and styles. Um, it's not really very obvious with the background. I'm just going to change the background. Ah, much better. Well, slightly better. So you can see this is a little, little cross in the middle of the screen there. Little cross hair. You can set that to a green cross. I'm not going to go through all of these because when you select them, it, uh, the menu disappears and it's just a pain in the backside. And there's an option to reset all of the game adjust settings to the factory default. Next is Picture Adjust, which allows you to adjust things like the brightness, the contrast, sharpness, which you can change in increments of 10. 50 is the default value. I prefer it a little bit sharper and uh, 60. There are some sub-pixel issues on this monitor, which are explored in the review. Um, so I think some, some users will like to increase this a bit. 70 some users may even prefer as well, but uh, I find 60 the most comfortable. I wouldn't say it's perfect, but it's, uh, for me, a little bit better than 50. There's Gamma. You can set that to various different Gamma modes. It's mode 1, Mode 2, Mode 3 and Mode 4. Again, explored in the review. Colour Temp. So you can change the colour temperature. 
Custom, which allows you to access the red, green and blue colour channels, which is the next option. There's Warm, which isn't actually warm, it's um, just slightly cooler. Um, I wouldn't describe it as warm, it's, I mean, it's, it's warmer than medium or cool, but it's still quite cool in its uh, colour tone. It's got quite a high white point. Medium, which is cooler again, and cool, which is even cooler, so a higher white point. Custom's good because it lets you manually adjust the red, green and blue colour channels, as I've done for my test settings here. As I mentioned earlier, there's no low blue light setting on this monitor that doesn't kill the contrast. Uh, if you change the colour channels, it does lower the contrast. That happens with any monitor. But the change in contrast, the drop in contrast, is nothing compared to what the uh, reader mode does. So in the evening, I like to actually decrease the green colour channel to around 30 and the blue colour channel to zero. And that acts as, a, on my unit, a nicely balanced low blue light setting which will uh, have the desired effect in that respect. Black level, which is greyed out because I'm using DisplayPort at the moment, but basically that allows you to change it to either high or low. Um, high being if you're using a full range colour signal, and low being if you're using a limited range RGB signal, so it depends on the source. Most PC users, you should have that set to, um, and actually many games consoles nowadays as well, you should have that set to high. Low is just if you're using a, a system or a console which uses a limited range signal and prefers that. DFC, um, that stands for Dynamic Fine Contrast, and this is the dynamic contrast function of the monitor, and that is again explored in the review. Picture Reset, which explores everything in this part of the menu to the factory defaults. You can select an input, so you can change it to HDMI 1, HDMI port 2, or display port. There's an aspect ratio setting. If you've got FreeSync off, you can set the aspect ratio to full wide, original, or one-to-one. -one. So the one-to-one -one option is not available if you're using FreeSync. That's because you can't have the monitor scaling in that way when you've got uh, FreeSync active. So full wide will basically fill everything. Now, it doesn't matter what resolution you select. It'll use all of the pixels of the monitor. It'll use an interpolation process. It's explored in the review. If you set this to um, original, it'll maintain the source aspect ratio. So if you're using something that isn't 16 by nine, you might get some black borders at one side. Uh, but things won't sort of be stretched across, so they'll appear um, undistorted in that respect. Or well, there's one-to-one, -one, which will give you a little area in the middle of the screen, the black border around it. Finally, there's general. This allows you to change things such as the language that the OSD is displayed in, the smart energy saving, and this is actually set to low by default. I set it to off um, because I like to test things in a consistent way. Um, in the review and I don't want the monitor to adjust its backlight when I'm not expecting it to. But what this does is it says conserve energy by using luminance compensation algorithm. Basically what it's supposed to do is slightly reduce the backlight brightness when there's just dark content being displayed or predominantly dark content just to save a bit of energy. But again I don't know if it's just my unit or the changes were just very subtle but I didn't really notice a difference. Um, with this setting on to low, high or off. So I just set it to off anyway. Power LED, I've already explored, there's a red power LED um, for the joystick. You can have that on or off, depending on your preferences. Well, there's automatic standby, and what this means is after a given amount of time, the monitor will put a message on the screen to say it's going to go into standby, and if you don't twiddle the joystick or press one of the buttons there, um, it'll go into standby for you automatically. HDMI compatibility mode, uh, not really relevant for most users, and certainly if you're using DisplayPort, not relevant at all. Um, DisplayPort 1.2, full features of the monitor, you want that enabled, but if you're using an old computer with DisplayPort 1.1, you first of all probably shouldn't be using this monitor, but if you are having to do that, that's a compatibility mode for older GPUs. Quick charge, and that, as it explains, is a feature of the USB 3 port, so it means that devices connected to it can be quickly charged. Very useful. 
OSD lock to stop annoying family members using the OSD without your permission, except for the clever ones who know how to disable the lock. Information shows you the model number, serial number, total on time and resolution of the monitor, and an option to reset everything to the factory defaults. So that was all there is to the OSD on-screen display menu system of the LG 32GK850F. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info. There's a link to that in the description of the video, as well as information about how you can support the work that we do.